Ten seconds. Mommy, then John. And John will have first question. You take first question, too. No, you. Oh, you. <laughs> Senator Everett Dirksen, Republican of Illinois. Senator Dirksen, is this a time for rejoicing? Well, I don't know whether you rejoice or not, because sometimes the word is uh, uh, mistaken for gloating, and certainly uh, gloating is not a part of my nature. We felt that we were fighting a righteous cause, and uh, obviously we're glad we prevailed. So in that sense, of course, you may say that uh, we do rejoice. But I hope no one will ever misunderstand and think we gloat over a victory. Because those who oppose this bill had a conviction that I'm confident was just as deep and just as durable as a conviction I cherished with respect to the enactment of the bill. So uh, I'm happy, of course, that uh, it finally prevailed. Senator, you spoke with uh, moving eloquence on the floor. Was it a solemn moment for you? Well, it was a solemn moment. The galleries were filled. Every member was on the floor, including our uh, distinguished member from California, uh, Senator Engel, who has been immobilized by a critical illness for quite some time. So you can't mistake the solemnity of the occasion. Senator Dirksen... What about Senator Goldwater's no vote? Will it help him or hurt him in San Francisco? <coughs> I have no particular uh, opinion about it that one might regard as expert. The only opinion I think I can register is that from the standpoint of the delegates, I doubt very much whether it will hurt him. I have at least seen no evidence to that effect. Looking ahead to the election, Senator, if... Senator Goldwater is your Republican standard bearer. Uh, will his stand on civil rights change the possibilities of a victory in November? Well, it'll have some impact, obviously, on those who have been very zealous crusaders in this cause. That might be the clergy. It, it could be uh, those groups, uh, liberal in tendency, who uh, go very much for this cause. And it, it might have some effect on them. Now, obviously, you have to put this in the form of an equation. You have to balance it up because it will have effect on one side and on the other. And on net balance, I doubt whether anybody can say exactly what the ultimate result will be. Senator, do you recall any other piece of legislation, sir, that compared with this uh, in civic magnitude? No, and I recall no other piece of legislation that received so long and meticulous attention. I know the time that we devoted to it, and when I say we, I'm thinking particularly of the, the what I regard as an expert staff, young men who are on the subcommittees of the Judiciary Committee, who have been most helpful all along the line. And you lived with it every hour and every minute of the day, knowing that the Senate could do no other business except by unanimous consent, until this had finally been disposed. Senator, following Senator Goldwater's vote, we've heard some talk from some of the Southern senators about the possibility of Democrats crossing over to the Republican side in the South in November, if Senator Goldwater is your standard bearer. Any views on that? No views, except, of course, that that is a possibility. I can well understand it. But I understand also how deep-rooted is the Democratic faith in the southern states. I know also that with respect to the laws governing elections and the selection of uh, your whole organization pattern in the southern states, that it might not make a great deal of difference. But I would guess offhand, and this is an estimate off the top of my head, that he would probably gain on balance in the southern states. Senator, in your uh, summation, sir, you spoke of unprecedented bills, pieces of legislation in the past uh, that now are accepted years later. How long, sir, do you think uh, before this schism is healed? How long before you think the provisions of this civil rights bill will be accepted? It will take some time. 
I don't know that I can target it in a period of years. But like everything else, there's got to be adjustment, and that period of adjustment will come. Uh, it's going to take some time because, as everyone knows, this has been shot through with emotionalism. This is really a challenging issue, and that adjustment doesn't come as quickly as one might hope for. But ultimately, it must come. And so you just abide the time when uh, the scars will be healed, when the waters will subside, and at long last, we continue to move forward as a national entity. Senator Dirksen, the Senate has passed a civil rights bill. It is not the same bill which the House passed. What will happen now? Will there be a long delay again on this bill before it goes to the President? I trust not. Of course, the House has been advised, or perhaps I ought to specify and say the House leaders who have been instrumental in the civil rights fight in the House have been constantly advised of what's going on and what changes have been made in the Senate. The Department of Justice knows for well what the changes have been. So I'm hopeful that it may not go to conference, although on that point, I can't be sure. If the bill could go to the House, if there could be a motion to concur in the Senate amendments, that, of course, would be the expeditious thing to do, for then it could go to the White House without any delay whatsoever. Senator, who do you feel is most responsible, what individual most responsible for the passage of this bill? Oh, I don't know that I can name anybody particularly, but I do want to salute Senator Humphrey of Minnesota. He was the floor captain of the bill in the Senate, and I think he did a perfectly magnificent job. I salute the majority leader, Mike Mansfield, who is the very essence of tolerance and humility and self-effacement and who has somehow adjusted himself to every condition. It has been a trying moment for him. There are others as well, but those two I pick out in particular because they had a tremendous impact upon this measure. Senator, according to a national publication this week, sir, you practically wrote the bill yourself. Well, I know how those encomiums are. And I prefer probably to stay in the background and not take that kind of credit. I can say, as a matter of fact, that there are probably 70 or 75 amendments that we wrote into the bill, both of substance and some that are not too consequential, which uh, got into the bill, and it had much to do with its passage, I think. Senator, I'd like to get back to one point, and that's on politics as the result of the Civil Rights Bill passage. We've heard some talk from some Southern senators here today about a possible realignment of the political parties coming out of this. Do you feel this might happen? Well, I've been around these diggings for 31 years, and I've seen these various committees set up of really stalwart, outstanding Americans who uh, started out with a purpose and objective of bringing about a, a realignment of the parties. It has not yet happened. It will require a considerable lot of doing before that ever is encompassed. I do hope, of course, that it can be done and that at long last we can get rid of any sectional spirit and that we can have a two-party system in every state in the Union. Thank you, Senator. Taken on this bill to change any of that? Oh, goodness, I do not know. And as a matter of fact, I do not care. You see, I got to live with my own conscience. And I have to do what I think is the right thing to do. So that when the time comes for me to shuffle off this mortal coil, I can at least feel that without being mercenary or mendacious or deeply personal about what I do, that I've done what, in my judgment, was the righteous and proper thing at the time in the interest of the country, for when all is said and done, what other factor counts than that the Republic shall go forward? 
Senator, what will happen at the platform committee meeting? Will they accept the Senate version as the Republican uh, plank? Well, I don't know quite what the platform committee will want to do because I'm anticipating, of course, that we'll have agreement with the House on the final bill, that it will be signed, and that it will be signed, in fact, before the Republican convention takes action in California starting the 13th of July. Now, to that extent, of course, you fall back on a general statement of principle. I'm not advised what that statement of principle will be, but under the good tutelage and leadership of Congressman Mel Laird of Wisconsin, I'm pretty sure they'll come up with a realistic plank that will take into account all these factors and all the actions that have been taken in the 88th Congress. 